David West set up Studio Egre West, or so, uh, with Christophe Egre back in 2004, with an ambition to reunite urban design and architecture. And their website advertises memorable places that surprise and delight. Last year, the practice won two major London projects. The first was the regeneration of the City of London's grade two listed Smithfield wholesale market. The second uh, was a, as principal master plan architects in a 50-50 collaboration with Hawkins Brown for the Earls Court development for Delancey and APG who bought the site from Capco in 2019. So David, perhaps you could tell me about some of your placemaking projects in London that surprise and delight. And so let's start with the old vinyl factory, which li lives up to another of your missions, that the scheme should be rooted in their context uh, to such an extent that I believe they're now once again pressing vinyl there with an output of something over a million records a year. Uh, the old vinyl factory uh, has been in our studio now and it's one of the places we've been working in for over a decade and uh, you know it's a slow burn like like many many large-scale projects it slowly evolves into the place one one really aspires it to become um i think it's a, a really great example of um, something we champion which is uh tabula plena you know the, the full table uh, instead of tabula rasa which is very much the carte blanche the, the clean slate and we see the opportunity to, to retain things and give things different lives, even if they're not perfect <laughs> uh, and sometimes actually downright ugly to, to some people um, and, and give them uh, a, a rooting. And uh, I, when we inherited the old vinyl factory as a kind of a, an original planning consent, I think it was known as uh, London Gate and just because it was sort of on the edge of London near Heathrow and an entire application process has gone forward with this funny name, London Gate. And yeah, within weeks of gaining the commission with you and I, uh, we discovered that this was uh, HMV, you know, and, uh, and EMI latterly, and, and, uh, and originally the gramophone factory. So we, we wove an entire story uh, around its, its history and its purpose. And um, I don't think that's a, a patronizing thing to do. I think it's something that allows people to, to connect with a place and to, to, to be part of its journey. Um, yeah, we take that sort of characterful um, uh, approach on almost every single project. And I think it's really important as designers to have an awareness of real, a real awareness, a real care uh, about the past, as well as looking to the future. Uh, I, I, I get a bit tired in presentations when people uh, just show, and this is the historic evolution of the place. And now let's just ignore that. <laughs> Here's our idea. Uh, uh, we, we really, really, uh, really dive into that sort of detail. And um, I suppose the, the old vinyl factory was also uh, a real to drive for us in terms of mixed use uh, and, and how to blend mix, mixes of uses and how to get a cross section of uh, different types of working space, entertaining space, playing, meeting space. Indeed, it also demonstrated the flexibility of some of our frameworks, which was, you know, for example, we got a, a consent for a, 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 a cinema. Uh, and then we couldn't really make the cinema car parking work. So that actually transformed into a 700 student college of music, uh, which is, you know, uh, and recording, uh, which I think is really uh, an important thing in city making to just always have that flexibility. And I guess lastly, it's about this idea of uh, the industrious neighbourhoods. And we've taken that as a kind of a, a mantra into numerous mixed use schemes that we're now working on. One in Murphy's Yard in Kentish Town, another called Faraday Works in, uh, uh, over in Charlton. But we're really trying to blend uh, a real variety, uh, a plethora of different types of working spaces, light industry spaces, all the way up to kind of larger spaces, and then combining that with living. We think that's a really important thing to, to allow the white van driver to have a slightly more noble environment than the, the old fashioned industrial estate. So a, a, a very different sort of project is uh, New Bermondsey, where you're <coughs> planning to provide uh, three and a half thousand homes and two thousand jobs uh, around Millwall Football Club and right next to a new overground station. That's on, on a really tight brownfield site. So how, how do you create a memorable and delightful place at that sort of density? Well, I think we're finding that uh, the, 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 the most places are getting denser. There's always a conversation about height, good or bad. 
And, and I think as a studio, we've we've never really shied away from, from density. We've never really shied away from height because we think it's kind of an inevitable kind of um, part of uh, a city's evolution and journey. I think what we're fascinated by is how to make the most livable uh, places and how to take the words that people find quite easy to write in, in briefs and bring them to life. How to make places accessible, how to make them inclusive, how to make them diverse. It's so easy to write that, but how you actually bring that out into a, into a design of a place is the challenge that we like to accept. I think at New Bermondsey, I think we're making a really multi-layered place, a multi-leveled uh, landscape. And I think that softening, that blurring of boundaries of inside and out between landscape and urbanism, landscape and architecture, is fundamental to the way that we work. But I believe it's fundamental to the way that we create sustainable, higher density uh, places so that you have a plethora of opportunities to engage with nature. Uh, biophilic design is becoming more and more uh, a kind of an, an expected uh, requirement. And I think post COVID, everybody's going to want to have nature on their doorstep, completely and utterly integrated into the way that they're living. So we dial up the density, we dial up the nature. Um, also at the base of um, uh, kind of all of the kind of the high rise uh, buildings at New Bermondsey, we, we have very generous, very flexible, uh, community uh, orientated uh, spaces, whether they be multi-purpose sports venues or polyvalent, uh, uh, almost theatrical kind of auditoria spaces. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to, to, to create a, a city that, that can actually nurture the residents above. New Berms has always been, in our minds, the kind of the, 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 the Barbican 2.0 as a challenge, you know, uh, how do we make it more connected, more seamless, more inclusive, and learn from the qualities of the Barbican, which is landscape and community facilities integrated around the base of really fabulous residential design. And, and, and tell me what you're planning at, at Smithfield. That's a, a pretty long term project, I guess, as the meat market won't be moving out for some years. It is a long term project and it's a proper gazing into the future. <laughs> kind of uh, aspiration. Our, our brief at Smithfield is, is really to articulate the good reasons uh, why um, uh, the, the, the meat market should move and be consolidated as part of the wider market consolidation programme in Barking. And the kind of the good reasons for releasing this amazing uh, set of structures that actually sit frankly, at the, the crosshair of London, you know, really, if you drew London and just said X marks the spot right in the middle, target, uh, it's, it's, it's Smithfield Market. And I think geographies of London are shifting. And I think the City of London Corporation have, have rightly identified uh, their Culture Mile uh, project, the opportunity to continue to have culture and creativity and innovation right at the heart of um, what is the centre of the city. And our brief and a fabulous client, Chris Bonner there at uh, City London Corporation has allowed us to articulate sensitively how these uh, listed structures can effectively house the most creative and most flexible of uses. And we, we've been really understanding how we can host uh, everything from, from fashion shows and art shows and an event space um, through to, 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 to carefully curated workspace, craft space, and also very importantly, explore the future of food. You know, we, we, we don't want to deny in any way uh, the site's rich history as a food market, as a meat market. And yet we are looking to the future of food. Uh, and so we're, we're working very closely with a number of different uh, uh, people to, to think about how to best um, bring the future of food in, into the market from underground basement farming uh, all the way through to uh, independent, uh, independent retail. And lastly, I think really quickly, our work has been to try and unlock uh, the potential of the, 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 the market structures and the basement structures and rotunda that sits to the south. And so we've been carefully thinking about how we could actually incise a kind of a cut in the main Grand Avenue to allow a really, really strong connection between the basement spaces and the rotunda spaces and the upstairs, releasing the full potential of the place and also giving us a chance to invite nature in uh, there's a current theme, constant theme in the work actually, which is to sort of continuously try and blend and blur the boundaries between inside and outside. And that's something I think we're really doing successfully at Smithfield. And now Earl's Court, that's a, a major strategic site for London and it's got the potential to deliver a lot of homes, but the 
previous owners rather struggled with it. How, how have you approached the master plan for this uh, really very complex piece of the capital? Well, it's very early days. Uh, we, we won the competition, a long competition during COVID-19, original lockdown one. We won the competition now about, about, about six months ago. And I think a crucial few statements to make about this is framework, <laughs> framework, not master plan. I think master plan, frankly, as a word, is something we hardly allow to be used in the studio and only when a, a new client comes through the door and talks about a master plan. We think master plan is kind of inherently out of date, archaic and actually on the cusp of being sexist, master. Uh, and and this, it's very two dimensional, the master plan. It's my vision. I've got all the answers and here it is. You'll stick with this, live with this. And we fundamentally disagree with that. And I think Earl's Court's a really brilliant example of a, of, 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 a, of a vision and a scheme that maybe got a bit stuck. And our ambition is to be much more fluid, much more flexible, much more open-minded in all our conversations with all stakeholders and the local authorities. It's very much a framework. And I suppose the second key word is, um, is, is collaboration. You know, uh, we're delighted to be collaborating with Hawkins Brown as our 50-50 framework planning partner. Um, but also this, the, the rest of the team, the key stakeholders, the widest community groups and the local authorities, they're, they're, they're our team as well as Delancey and TFL as our very, very, very open-minded uh, clients. And I think collaboration is a, is a massively important word that all designers need to take very seriously and, and commit to, however hard it sometimes is. And I think uh, the outcome, the output that Earl's Call is going to be a really co-authored, very collaborative um, approach. And then lastly, the kind of the, the biggest driver for us, I suppose, is, is landscape, uh, where the Studio Go West uh, with Hawkins Brown, are the kind of the, the landscape architect for the project too. And we see it as a landscape led, public realm led uh, framework um, because that's where we get to stitch in with the communities. That's where we say, hello, come in, you're welcome, you're invited, you're part of this. And I think um, we've been working on a huge amount of meanwhile projects in the, in the past. It's always been something that Studio Garest has done in terms of framework planning, evolving places over time. And I think what we'd like to do is go beyond meanwhile. Beyond meanwhile is worthwhile because that it can get quite patronizing quite quickly. Oh, let's get a little bit of a food market over here and it'll be cool. Instead, we actually just want to be open about how cities grow, how they evolve, and that using working with public realm, working with landscape, working with existing structures and uh, finding unusual things on the site and slowly but surely stitching in and inviting people and program in and plants um, uh, we think is the way to heal a city, stitch a city and evolve a city and we'll be, we'll be thinking about all those things as we craft the framework for Earl's Court. I can't really say any more than that because it's, it's super fresh <laughs> but looking forward to sharing much more in 2021 and 22. I look forward to that. Perhaps I can just ask you one last question. You've talked about density and uh, you know, as, as a practice, as you say, you've always been looking at creating mixed use neighbourhoods. Uh, what's your response to the idea of the 15 minute city, which has been getting quite a lot of coverage in over the COVID period as, as, as a response to the changing nature of the way we use cities? Um, in truth, I don't actually think it's a new idea. Uh, I, I think um, many, many, many ideas that people have get wrapped up and slightly recycled in a, in a rather desperate pursuit of innovation uh, to stand out from the crowd and sort of say, look, we've had this fabulous idea. I think 15 minute city is just pretty straightforward mixed use neighbourhood planning uh, with public realm at the heart and really trying to ensure that um, people have the opportunity to, to, to mix in terms of uh, togetherness, community, sense of neighbourhood, sense of belonging, sense of place and proximity to a wide variety uh, of, of choices, choices of programme, choices of public space, etc. Um, you know, I can't think of a single project we've worked on in 20 years that's not described as pretty much a 15 minute city. And then they're all blending uses and they're all blending uh, people in place. And uh, so therefore, I'm gonna say I'm slightly non plus about it. Um, I actually think there's a huge danger at the moment, uh, just to conclude in a way, uh, that um, 
that, 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 that people can hide behind a lot of words at the moment rather than action. Uh, and I think we're in a, we're in a place of uh, slight navel gazing because we're spending so much time <laughs> often on our own in, in, in quite small environments. And I think, um, I think the trajectory of, of where we are going post-COVID was, was good. So pre-COVID was, was good. And, and I think positively, I feel like as a, as a practice that believes in architecture, urban design and landscape in equal measure, finally, we don't have to, we don't have to over promote the importance of landscape. Everybody's now seeing it as a given. We don't have to over promote the importance of public realm. Finally, everybody's seeing that as a given. Uh, and actually, I think it's very exciting to imagine how people are going to actually be more generous in thinking about space, space standards, thinking about relationships between homes, inside and outside, balconies, winter gardens, etc. And how we're actually going to, it's going to be easier to think about uh, having workspace as a, as a fundamental component of maybe edge of centre uh, development, where before maybe someone said, oh, that's not viable. Now it's just a bit easier to talk about having proper mixed use in those edge of centre conditions. And um, that's exciting. Uh, so in a way, I'm very, very positive about the future. Uh, uh, post COVID, even during COVID, I'm quite excited about the future. Great. Well, David, thank you very much indeed. And uh, you know, uh, place making and landscaping has been moving up the agenda really the last uh, 20 years or so. And I think COVID has really just reinforced and accelerated that. So, uh, absolutely, I, I look forward to seeing your memorable places uh, 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 being created in these really interesting place parts of London. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Pragmatism and poetry <laughs> has, has long been our calling card. Uh, uh, you know, creativity mixed with commerciality too. And uh, I, th I think that um, that's just what our times need. Thanks again for having a chat with me. Very good. Bye. Bye-bye.